Hey, you guys got off on me there. Yeah, I thought this road would be great for TikTok, but, you know, country roads on it or any kind of music that fit the old country scene. No trespass. Yeah, this all used to be trails and trails, and now they have cameras out here and they feel and they really didn't you know it was after everybody started trashing up using it as a dump site uh, meth labs that kind of stuff before they came in here and said no more the owners put up the trespassing signs and put cameras up and in them for so sunny day after you've been stuck inside with rainy dreary weather Ugh. I do not like I, my best is out hunting the back roads for old automotive content or any kind of good content for YouTube or TikTok or Facebook page or Instagram or Patreon or Placey now that I'm on a new one but uh had the funds to go far but this weekend I plan on taking off at least for a whole day I mean like early in the morning get up in the hills I mean they're going up into the hills toward Elkins West Virginia or going up toward like Nelsonville high up in Wayne County high beautiful country out here I know, I take it for granted and I have some people in the big city saying, you know, when I'm out doing the junkyard videos, they love hearing the leaves, or, you know, when I'm walking through them and all the noises and scenery. Right here is this house I was talking about. They just bought this house and like I said, did away with the electric and the plumbing. These are all Amish houses out through here. For like the next eight or nine houses. I think there might be one house out here. Um, then they wrap around the other, they go the other way if I turn right. There's more out that way. But I think there's one house here. Maybe this one. Maybe not. It has cars in it. That, no, the one down on the corner is. I know that. This house way up on the hill used to own all this farm 40 years ago and they sold it and built that very nice house up on the hill got some sheep this was the original house right here and uh, this guy right here he used to be chief of police in New Haven a lavender he's the one that it's not Amish but you see that house up on the hill there their last name had to be Dewhurst, I guess, so they named it Dewhurst Road. In my day, I haven't heard of anyone in the last 15, 20 years, but a lot of people got killed on this road because they would just fly where it's got these hills, you know, you go fast over a hill, it makes your stomach drop or jump or whatever. Um, a lot of people got killed on these roads. Especially coming up here is a, a hump and a turn all at once. So you come up around this one. Let's just say doing 50 or 60. You know, I'm doing 50 now, 40. Say 60, you come up around here. And as soon as you come up over, you do a little airborne. But you got to turn at the same time. Right there is a lot of people. I, I know four people got killed in the last 30 years right there. That's a lot on a little old road that nobody travels on. This road falls us right into Hartford, West Virginia, which is just right up a few miles from where I live. But it's a nice little country road. There's a log cabin, original log cabin right in front of us. 
they modernized, but it's been there for many decades. It used to be an A-frame home I'm sitting right here where this mobile home sits on the left. Beautiful A-frame home I used to pate at in my younger days. When I used to pate. Then pate turned into a addiction. And then what started out as a pate, here I was doing everything in a home, hiding it away. Addiction talk about that later on I'll be 12 years clean March 31st from pain meds and everything I still smoke marijuana up till oh, a little over a year ago it was a gradual way of getting back to my life coming off drugs It's hard to pass anybody on these roads. Got on this guy pull off a little bit. Remember a couple of girls there lived here in this trailer growing up when I was in high school. I think their name was Black. Oh, I had a crush on that one. And never did tell her until here two or three years ago we became Facebook friends. She was like, Why didn't you tell me? It's <laughs> like, so guys younger guys that girl that you got a crush on that you think would never have nothing to do with you just might feel the same way or be very happy that you feel that way about her I went so many years worried of what people thought of me more than I thought of myself and when I started respecting myself and loving myself it made life just so much better. It made life better for my son, my grandsons. You gotta love yourself, guys. As I always end all my full videos, it, it would be a boring world if we was all the same. Keep being you. And that's so true, you know. Uh, people are, especially, I, I find the newer generations getting. Uh, accepting people easier, easier, easier. I wasn't even a word. I just made a word up. But yeah, just uh, I guess if you're not around someone or something, maybe it scares them or it scares you or whatever. But uh, you know, everybody's different. We get this whatever is normal, like whatever is the normal music, whatever is the top forty. You know, uh, we get pushed into that. Oh, how, what can I say? We get pushed into what we feel is norm to, to fit in, you know. And now, you know, my generation, I'm 55 and older, kind of flipping out on some of the younger generations for being their selves, but uh, I like it. You know, I like it that they feel the way they do, you know. Uh, they feel to express their way and the way they look and stuff. I respect that. It takes guts. It takes confidence. Uh, you know. Not that I'd want to, you know, most of them I wouldn't want to look like or live like. But that's because... I am who I am, you know, but I don't judge, I, I do judge him, I judge him for, you know, having the right to do that, you know, uh, if somebody's all dressed up, getting made fun of, I'm going to take up for that person, uh, for whatever belief they have, as long as they're not hurting nobody, uh, you know, that's the way I look at it kind of rambling on well we've about got our country ride done look at that somebody's got a board tracker all tore apart as always guys it'd be a boring world if we's all the same 
keep being you get out uh, explore find an adventure uh, I'm telling you if you ain't got a car walk got a bicycle ride a bike get out you know dress up whatever you keep warm uh, sitting in the house they say 30 minutes of sunlight will cure your depression I ain't talking about some deep clinical depression. I'm talking about your everyday depression that everyone gets. So get out. Uh, you know, it's so easy. If you're on that track feeling sorry for yourself just to sit inside and do it. Hartford, West Virginia. This was a huge area. Thousands of people lived in here where there's less than probably 50, 70 now. Back in the... Uh, uh, we're talking years ago, you know, pre, right after the Civil War. Um, it was a big salt community. Before the coal mines came in, the salt mines is where a lot of these areas in West Virginia and Ohio made their money along the Ohio River. Uh, even by 18, right, 70s and 1880s, trains wasn't everywhere, you know, and still a lot of our goods got ship down the Ohio River and so all these little towns and areas that was along the Ohio River was very popular at one time popular uh, very well I mean like multiple hotels saloons and everything uh, stores you know, just like in the middle of nowhere but we got this golf course and people come from hundreds of miles around to, to come to uh, Riverside Golf Course. Went to high school and a little bit of college. He went with me to Vermont State. Mitch Roush. He's still a uh, owner. Him and his brothers are... His dad might still be alive. I'm not sure, but still family owned. And golf course right there, guys beautiful place right up here it was closed down probably when I was two or three years old you know somewhere around that I was born in 67 a uh, it's a big building now with a trailer court and a auction house but it used to be a drive-in theater and I can remember they still had the, like the little building where you go get the food up there all up till 30, 35 years ago it was still there. This little restaurant right there I used to manage back in my 20s. Right here where this stone building is. That was where the, the drive-in was, Mason Drive-In. This little two-story building was a one-story building. And it was Bob Stick Shake. A little like our little Dairy Queen. Not, uh, you know, regular Bob Shake. Bob Stick Shake. Here we got the VFW. This house right up here on the right, this gray one, there was another one set right beside it. Exactly. Two brothers built back around the turn of the century. Beautiful home. I, I think they've shown pictures of it online. It's this beautiful woodwork on the inside. Here I've made my ending and told you guys goodbye and I still found it. Later guys.